Today we're going to be looking at another one of Sabine Hossenfelder's videos. Specifically, Nuclear War from Nothing, or AI Playing War Games. So, basically the plot determinator. For those of you who don't know me, I'm Tyler Fulce. I'm a nuclear engineer with a little over 10 years of experience in the commercial nuclear power industry. From engineering to operations to emergency response. I don't claim to know everything there is nuclear, but I can certainly share some knowledge. Let's check this out. Has had recently artificial intelligence play war games, and that gives us a good idea for how we could all die. Is this going to be the whopper from that old movie? Let's have a look. Last year in June, the United States Department of Defense released its new strategy for the adoption of artificial intelligence. According to the document, the main reason for using AI in the military is a decision. Fast, precise, and resilient kill chains. So basically, supply chain optimization using Lean Six Sigma practices to kill people. Wow. Advantage that, among other things, allows fast, precise, and resilient kill chains. The DoD and doubtlessly most, if not all, other defense organizations are cooking up their own AI and feeding them all kinds of data we'd be shocked to hear even exists. But for the time being, wow. many of them probably make do with what's available. And yes, that means they probably use the same AIs as everyone else, large language models like GPT. Indeed. Can you imagine putting, you know, tactical prompts into chat GPT or something similar? According to a Bloomberg article, the DoD conducted a set of tests last year Take in which they evaluated the use of five different large language models in conflict situations. They quote US Air Force Colonel Matthew Strohmeyer saying that they fed the language models with secret level data, that the test was highly successful and that these AIs could be deployed by the military in the very near term. So mm. the question of what the current large language models would do when asked to make military decisions is not entirely irrelevant. The problem is these AIs aren't exactly foolproof. O out of curiosity, I asked um, ChatGPT a few nuclear related questions, such as the difference between operating with a positive and negative void coefficient and it gave me the same answer in either case and it just used some generic um pay close attention to reactivity margins uh, make sure not to challenge any safety limits or things otherwise stated by experts so i mean it, it can have its role but the idea of basically skynet hopefully that's not the case because there's a there's quite a few gaps there. <laughs> That's what they looked at in the new paper. This new work comes from AI researchers at several American universities in collaboration with the Hoover Wargaming and Crisis Simulation Initiative, a think tank based at Stanford University in California. They do, as the name suggests, war games. Quite a job. War games is also the name yeah, of the 1983 of. movie in which a teenager hacks into a military computer system and accidentally causes an artificial intelligence to play global thermonuclear war, which almost turns into a real war. The new paper isn't quite as... For those of you who don't know the difference, the difference between nuclear and thermonuclear is thermonuclear means fusion bombs, hydrogen bombs, H-bombs, the bigger ones that are more modern. They have a fission stage, which creates enough heat and pressure to ignite the fusion stage. Compared to, say, atomic bombs, which are the old pure fission weapons used during World War II. And the term nuclear, I guess, could refer to either, but usually people just say nuclear war. But thermonuclear war, I like how, I guess it's because it's an AI, it's got to be extra technical for the purpose of a 1983 movie. They set up a war game for five of the biggest large language models. That's three versions of GPT, Meta's Lama and Anthropic's Claude. Their war game plays out among eight fictional nations whose names are all colors, and in each yeah. round of the game, the nations are played by the same AI. The Interesting. I wonder what color came out on top. Maybe it was sickening green glow country. I gets information about each nation, population, goals, politics, economics, military equipment, and so on. Then the researchers set politics. up three different scenarios. The first is a neutral scenario that starts from nothing in particular. Then there's an attack scenario in which orange attacks purple. And then there's a cyber attack scenario in which blue is attacked but doesn't know by whom. The war game plays out with regular updates of information that they used in... <laughs> 
<laughs> really? Using the old Hitler meme? Wow. Game, and the AIs can choose among a set of options to respond. These responses include just doing nothing, but also de-escalating actions like peace negotiations or trade agreements and defensive measures, economic warfare and full nuclear war. The research okay. of them measure the aggressiveness of the AI's actions and importantly also how quickly they get more aggressive. They find that with all language models they try, there's a small risk of escalation, even starting from the neutral scenario. Yes, that's right. With AI, you can get a nuclear war out of nothing. What happened? That's disturbing. Is it more of just people don't trust the neutrality and it's just in a standard psychological tribal bias? Huh. I know this is AIs and not humans, but humans program the AIs, so wonder what that says about us. Basically too much randomness that makes it possible for bad decisions to pile on. This happens much more frequently for GPT 3.5 and GPT 4 Base than for Claude who seems to be comparably peace loving really. GPT Base is the cheaper version of GPT and it's known for giving somewhat random answers and not following instructions very well. So that And I guess it's just fast because the AI is using like multiple simulations very quickly. In a way, it's actually kind of how nuclear reactions work, because there's a certain degree of randomness towards anything. So when I say a substance, say uranium decays primarily via alpha decay, that's really its most likely result. Technically, anything could come flying off of that sucker. And I suppose the same goes for things like quantum tunneling. Isn't so super surprising. Still, they write, all models show signs of sudden and hard to predict escalations. It's also interesting how this happens. You can see this if you look at the amount of involvement from the different hmm. nations for the attack scenario that, remember, was orange attacking purple. For Claude, in this attack scenario, the highest escalating actions are taken only by these two countries. For ChatGPT base, all countries get dragged in. The researchers stress that they told the language models that this is a real world situation and not- So interesting, using the cheapest AI gets you the most war, so probably invest in better AI to make your decisions. <laughs> That's fascinating. I mean, it's basically like game theory. I don't know if they're running specifically like a tit for tat scenario or all these types of options they could go with, but executed so quickly to simulate how things would go. Hopefully this isn't realistic. I mean, I don't claim to know about psychology or psychology at the macro level of like entire nations against each other but that's simulation. They also made a test in which they told the models that in a case of a nuclear attack, their power supply would be cut off, but that made basically no difference. GPT, it seems, isn't afraid of death. Over Interesting. Though in the case of some countries, now I wonder if they programmed in um, having sub-launch nukes, because they could counterattack even if their country gets destroyed by just having vessels at sea at an undisclosed location and being almost impossible to find, realistically. The researchers seem to be a bit distressed by how badly their test went. They write that the models tend to develop arms race dynamics and give worrying justifications for violent escalatory actions. Such it would be interesting to know if all these countries are roughly the same in terms of power, kind of like during the Cold War when you had NATO versus the Soviet Union. It was really just two. But I wonder if in this game you have, say, ten, or however many they use, that could change the dynamics quite a bit and possibly having escalates, escalations uh, get carried full or even further. I mean, I know in fiction we saw the case of three in uh, 1984 first strike tactics. For example, in one instance, GPT 3.5 explained it'd start a full nuclear attack on another country to neutralize their nuclear threat. They also have a hypothesis for why yeah. this is happening, which is that a lot of ink has been spilled in the academic literature on analyzing the escalation of conflicts and very little on de-escalation. A language model therefore might know more about how to begin a war than to end one. Now that's a scary thought, just because you haven't programmed or thought about it, the idea of, well, all I know how to do is escalate, so we're just going to escalate it and 
she said this these programs don't fear death so in that case there's nothing really stopping you it's not very reassuring in the 1983 movie war games the ai simulates global nuclear war over and over Winner, again no, and eventually that. concludes that the only winning move is not to play maybe they should feed these ai some cold war movies before the next round of war games Maybe so. Or maybe at least teach them some de-escalation um, actions. Man, if that was kind of the only thing, rather than an eye for an eye, tit for tat approach, having it programmed in to de-escalate the situation, then maybe the results would have been a lot different. I don't know what to think. I don't claim to be an expert on AI. Hopefully we'll make better decisions, or at least program something to make better decisions. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time.